know that. And tonight we're going to be talking about things you guys are very familiar with. And that's exercise and nutrition because you wouldn't have 11 and 15 years post-op and live in healthy, full lives as post-op patients and wonderful human beings who are giving so much back to the community. If you hadn't changed some things about your exercise and your nutrition. And here's what I want to ask each of you is how did you do that? Because before you had surgery, there had to have been some unhealthy nutrition habits. There had to have been some lack of physical activity, I'm guessing. I don't know for sure. But let's take uh, nutrition first. Let's just talk about nutrition for a minute. And how did you go about making those major changes from before surgery eating to post-surgery eating? Yvonne. I made the changes primarily because I was too afraid not to change. I knew that everything I did was wrong, everything. And when, and, and as we will probably come back to again tonight, I had zero aftercare. I did not see another post-op for three years. So there was nothing and there was not a lot online. And so I had to figure it out myself. I had to figure out that I was a food addict and I had to figure out what kind of behavior, you know, uh, helps that. And, and, and actually, I hate the word exercise. I, I, you know, because I think, I think if I heard one more person say, just diet and exercise, I want to choke them because yeah. I have no idea. So, um, you know, because I see how women react when I talk about exercise and I actually try to say, move your body or find a way to move. And that there's lots of ways to do it and you know everybody envisions the person running and all that and it, it doesn't have to be that way but i was just too afraid not to follow the program because i made sort of a promise to myself to the universe that if i can get back in the driver's seat just one more time i swear to god i will not mess this up i just can't because i wasn't going to get another chance it was a miracle i got the surgery in the first place so that's, that's primarily why I had to change everything because everything I did was wrong. So, so okay, we're going to come back to that because what, and I want you to think about um, after, after Laura shares how she went about changing her nutrition is what did you start doing given, given Yvonne that you had no aftercare, no support, no, how did you know what to do? But first let's hear from Laura. And, you know, how did you change the nutritional aspects? So in the very beginning, Connie, I always, what's kind of unique about tonight, I mean, I hope Robert finds his way in, but Yvonne, I always have called my bariatric angel because I, prior to surgery, I was terrified of the surgery. And prior to surgery, I had done tons and tons of research. And I had come across Yvonne on the OH board a million years ago. And... <laughs> About a year before my surgery, I started talking to Yvonne. I literally private messaged her one day and said, hey, can I answer you, ask you questions? And I had printed out binders and binders of information back on the day. Wow. I had read every weight loss surgery book prior to surgery. So I, I knew what I was getting myself into. And Yvonne was the first person I ever spoke to in the community. And so the fact that we've journeyed all these years together has been amazing. But in the very beginning, I agree with Yvonne, I was terrified. I mean, in the very beginning, I never wanted to eat. I was never hungry. I would set timers like, oh, you know, every surgeon's different, but you got to drink your milk. You got to take your vitamins. Like I had timers going off all the time because I was never hungry. And I was terrified of dumping, terrified. So for years, I did the bare, I mean, I did exactly what I was told, terrified of getting sick, terrified of all the things people talk about on those old boards, you know, stretching out your stomach and this and that. So I lived in this little bubble for a couple of years and I wasn't hungry. But being 11 years out, I made a lot of mistakes that Yvonne preaches that I started having a bite of this, a chunk of this cookie. I didn't stay afraid, which... I don't want people to stay afraid necessarily, but be educated because the minute you start tipping your toes in that water, it gets scary. Yeah. And again, yeah, that's right. where Regain comes in. And that's why I've spent so much of my time with the name Regain in front of my name because it's it's the hugest thing in the community. And right. I personally put 50 pounds back on. I took a job a couple of years ago 
that stressed me out and I jumped into it and I went back to all my bad habits, you know, and as far as nutrition went, you know, you're so good in the beginning because you're so scared and you don't want right. to feel nourished and you know exactly how many grams of protein. But then after you get five years, six years, seven years, you can eat a slice of pizza. You know, you can eat a cookie and not get sick. I mean, everybody's story is different, but you start right. playing the game. And so when I put that weight back on, I just said to myself, like Yvonne, I had made a deal. You know, I had that conversation with God the night before and my mom and I were at my house and I said, if I wake up from the surgery, I'm gonna respect it for the rest of my life. And I got educated. I went back to school. I went and got my nutrition certification because I truly believe the longer we're out, you know, the dental issues are a good example. Your story is going to change in every so many years increments. You're going to have the honeymoon stage. Then you're going to have a regain stage. Then you're going to have a get educated. Then you'll probably have an anemia. Are you taking your vitamins? Are you on your levels? Fix your vitamin deficiencies. Now I'm having dental issues. I'm going to be 45 in June and I'm going through crazy hormone craziness <laughs> where things that worked with my food before are not working now. And so I think as we grow older with these surgeries, it's so important to be educated on nutrition and understand what fats do for your body and proteins do for your body because it is not a set menu for life. As we age, things change, our chemistry changes, and a lot of people don't know a lot about anything. I never heard about dental issues until the last couple of years. And now that I'm having it, I mean, if you go on my Facebook page today, people are like, Oh, I've had 12 cavities filled. I've had root canals. I've, I mean, it's, it's a problem. Yeah. It's a major issue with deficiencies. And people, nobody tells you about that. My dentist doesn't know what I'm talking about because the surgeons are all unplugged. So when it comes to nutrition, you have to get educated, whether it's being on YouTube or being on you know, Netflix and watching all the food documentaries and learning about clean eating and plant-based and good protein versus bad protein. I just think people, you have to stay in a community, stay educated, find post-ops in your category, the 10 year, the 11 year, the 12 year, because my story with a two year post-op is different. They've had different surgeries. They're having sleeves, yeah, yeah. they had bypasses. Yeah. So I think we just have to stay in the community, support the community, don't be ashamed, share. And if it's not in public, find a private community, work in a right. smaller group. Because in my groups, I mean, the common threads just run so deep. And if we can help anybody know what's coming down the path, it's so powerful. But when it comes to nutrition, you have to make permanent changes. You have to stay loyal to it because you will regain it. And you just have to get educated. And I think some of the key things that you said are that the vitamins and the long term, this is a lifelong thing. And I think it's really essential. Am I echoing on you guys' end? Okay. Okay. Um, it's really essential that you have your levels checked with your, with your physician and stay in touch with your bariatric practice. If you move to another place, get involved with one there because bariatric nutrition is very, very different yeah. than general population nutrition. And I think the emphasis on education is important. And if you're not plugged into the community, and like Laura was saying, at the stage at which you are post-op, you know, get plugged in and definitely have your levels drawn because those absorption issues and the nutritional deficiencies are so essential. And the older we get, you know, things change. So you, had a, you, you sought out a lot of information on your own, which was awesome. Yvonne, you were very isolated. So uh -huh. wh where did you learn? Actually, the only person I found online at that time was Barbara Thompson. And, and even at that, there was still just you know, some little things, and I, I held on to every nugget I could get, you know, there, but after that, um, I realized I started questioning the whole food addiction thing in, like, 2007, and oh my God, when I very first talked about that, I thought that everybody was going to explode, but um, it, it's just, but, you know, what I wanted to say about the nutrition, too, is I've talked to people who have lost their teeth, 
because they blew off the vitamin. And they're trying to say, oh, well, my surgeon did this or that. You, know, you didn't take your vitamins, did you? No. Nope. Right. And, and, you know, you end up with, uh, you know, blood transfusions, iron infusions. Knock on wood, I've never had that problem. I, and when women tell me, well, I forget to take my vitamins. I said, well, do you forget to take your birth control pills? And they go, no. And I said, well, put them in the same place. It's important because you won't be worrying about birth control when you don't have no teeth. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's you cool. know, you're just in that brown bag, you know. But anyway, um, it's just so important because we know that if we don't provide our body with a proper nutrition, it can't run. The engine can't run. You can't, I mean, it fogs your brain. And then we've got to deal with the fact that we have, like me, I went through instant menopause. And that was hell. And, and fortunately, I found a great solution for that. But um, it's just, it, it's so important to, to feed your brain and your body and get the weight away from sugar. Processed sugar is the devil. And I remember a bariatric surgeon telling me that it was literally the most uh, addictive substance known to man. And so, mm -hmm. You know, I try to tell people, I know it's good, but, you know, like any any habit that you form, if you take a month and get away from it, I swear your brain chemistry will change and you won't crave it the way you did. And like Laura was talking about, you know, testing the waters, you know, or, or that's what they called it. Or a lot of my uh, people will call it is that I went and tested the waters. I just had one in the M, then I had two, then I had three, and then it ends up being a whole bag. And then they said, why did I do that? I didn't do it for three or four years. And so I try to tell people, I don't want to get, and I know because Connie, you are, are very versed in the whole you know, eating disorder thing. And I, I, and I try not to be real black and white about what you should do. But it's sort of like, if you were a co if cocaine was your problem, are you going to have cheat snort days? No, because it's bad for you, right? So don't, don't do the thing. I mean, I could never eat just one. Never. And I don't know why after 30 years would I think now that would be any different just because I lost the weight. It's not any different. So because I can't eat just one, I just don't eat any. And I eat the things I like. And on top of that, I really eat very boring because I want to find the joy in life and the things other than food. Food is just fuel to me. And, and you know... I spent 30 years eating all the stuff. I mean, that should have been enough. I, I mean, I ate all the things I needed to eat. It's, and, and the thing is, is, the moment we're done eating, that high is gone. Right. I mean, we can't take it with us. It's a cheap high. I mean, if, if you do drugs, you know, that hangs on for a little while or you drink, you know. But with food, you're only high during the time you're eating. And then after it, yes. you, know, there you beat yourself up and, you know, you say, uh, and if you can just put yourself into that place before you eat, you know, the pain you'll be in, that's the way I matured with, with doing it. Go ahead, Laura. I think another thing about nutrition we have to remember is it's all a circle. So if you're not eating a good, clean, balanced, you know, if we eat a lot of processed sugars and foods and it's a post-op, we don't process it like you did before. Just like with our teeth, you know, sugar in our teeth, you know, when you're a little kid, go brush your teeth, all that sugar. But now it's even worse as a post-op because our body doesn't process things the same. If you're not taking your vitamins, you're not going to have the right, um, like the calcium and the things in your body. So like with my teeth, you know, I've been doing my research because my dentist doesn't know what I'm talking about. The periodontist, they don't, they don't know weight loss surgery. But if you're deficient in calcium, it's going to pull from somewhere else. I have bone scans. My bone scans look great, but it doesn't scan your teeth. So if your body is deficient on calcium, it's going to pull calcium out of the bones out of your mouth. So it's all a full circle. And as we pro progress and start talking about exercise, if we're not eating clean and feeding our body what it needs, you're not going to have the energy to exercise. Right. So you got to start in one because it's a full circle. If you're not taking your vitamins and you don't have the nutrients and you're not fueling your body, you, you can lay on a couch and think, oh, I really need to exercise. But if you're not eating a properly balanced, nutritious, fuel-loaded diet, you're not going to have the energy to go exercise. If you're on your or you're 
Yeah, if your iron's low well and you're anemic, you're not going to have the energy to go exercise right. and make the right choices. So unfortunately, it's not really easy to be really good at one and really bad at the other, you know, because you don't have the full circle to move with it. It's the same in the vitamin category, you know. I'm constantly talking in the room to the boards. You know, I set alarms on my smartphone for my vitamins. I prepackage them for the week. I'm 11 years out. I It's kind of dorky, but if I didn't do it, I wouldn't do it. And so, we have to. We have to do what we have to do to get the results we say we want, right? We have to be responsible and put forth the effort to get what we say we want. And you know, we, before we move on to exercise, I just want to point out some of the things that I'm hearing you know, I've worked at the same bariatric program for almost 12 years, wow. and I don't think I've heard anything about teeth. Now, I'm not saying that the nutritionists are not talking about it, and they may be in the classes, but I haven't heard much about that. So wow. that's something that's really important. And food addiction, I think that that's an area where people need to become more aware. I totally agree with you guys. One size does not fit all. Some people yeah. can do a few bites of this and a few bites of that, and they're okay. Awesome. I had one person say, this food calls to me, this one doesn't. So those foods that call to you, you might need to stay clear of all the time. You've yeah, got to know yourself well enough, and you've got to explore that topic of food addiction, because I think many of our people fall into the category of food addiction. And speaking of that, um, Tanny McCarty is going to be joining us. The three of us and Tenny McCarty, who of course is the guru on food addiction and eating disorders and working with uh, this population. And she herself was sugar free for many, many, many years. And she'll talk about that. And that's going to be on May 15th or 25th. What did I tell you, Laura? I think it's, what is it? 25th. 25th, May 25th. So mark your calendars now. Um, so we'll talk a lot about food addiction and sugar addiction and recovery from food addiction on that day. So I also like the idea of taking responsibility. Every one of us is responsible, responsible <laughs> for educating ourselves and getting the proper information. Yvonne, you were going to add another, another thing, and then we'll move on to the exercise. Dang, something about um, the, oh, I know what it's going to say is that when I tell people that I haven't had ice cream, candy, cake, pie in 15 years, they just like, oh my God, you know, I mean, I'm not going to die because I don't have those things. To me, they're just like, it's like cocaine. I mean, I, I don't need them. They have no nutritional value at all. And all they do is steal my life back away from me. And I mean, Laura, I mean, I watched her. I, I, I have so much... Um, I just can't believe she got that weight back off. I'm scared to death that if I ever gained it back, I couldn't get it back off. That that scares me. And I mean, I, I do live with that fear, but I just cannot go back because I, I just can't. I, I won't live like that ever again, not for another another minute. But I, I just think it, it's just it's just really important to, to sit down and think about the things you're eating and, and is it worth it? It's not worth it. But we know with the food addiction, it's not just about saying, oh, I just don't want that or I don't can't have it. you got to work on the root problem. We all know that. And we'll, I know we'll get to talk about that with Penny. So. Yes, and I'm actually in the process of writing a book called Weight Loss Surgery Does Not Treat Food Addiction. Oh, yes. It doesn't, right? right? No, no. Yeah. It's your head. That's your head. Yes. You know, weight loss surgery is on your stomach. Right. You know, the nutrition part and the exercise part, like you were saying, go hand in hand. So go ahead and talk more about that, Laura. And then Yvonne, share your experience because um, you both are big into exercise and, and so am I. And we all do different kinds of things. So let's share your experience with that and how that changed. Because I'll bet before you had weight loss surgery, you weren't doing the kinds of exercise that you're doing. You can't. You can't. I think for me, um, one of the things I teach in my classes is I say that everybody has to find their soulmate workout because what works for one of us isn't going to work for the rest of us. I am obsessed. I'm not great. I hate to run. I still to this day will say, if you see me running, you should probably call the police because somebody's chasing me. I am not a runner. Um, 
I'm the girl that's gonna be in the hip hop step aerobics class. I'm gonna be doing turbo jam. I'm gonna be doing the kickboxing. I like the classes and the cardio. Um, but everybody's gotta find their soulmate workout and you gotta be willing to try different things. And at the least, go out and walk. Get in three mile, five mile walk. I mean, every morning, if you follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, I take my pug, I drag her on a three mile walk on the riverfront where I live now because I do it for her because she needs to stay healthy. But it's a three mile walk to collect your thoughts in the morning and get out and about. But I think that people have to find something that works for them, that follows their passions, their tastes, because nobody wakes up and says, oh my God, I can't wait to go exercise. You know, you need to find a buddy. You need to find somebody that will go to the gym with you if the gym is your choice or go take a class or at least be your buddy to go make a fool of yourself at the class. You know, I took spin classes. I got addicted to Soul Cycle and some of those crazy intense mm -hmm. cycle classes because I would, I was working at Saks and I took my cosmetic girls every Wednesday night, 6.30, we left work at six and we went and rode and we hated it the first couple of weeks, but then it became girlfriend's night out and we all start going. But I think when it comes to fitness, you've got to make up your mind that it's non-negotiable, just like your vitamins and you got to find something. And again, like everything else on this journey, it's going to change. I was obsessed with cycle classes. I'm a huge Richard Simmons person. I, when I lived in California, I would go take classes at his studio with him when he was still on the radar and teaching in LA. But you got to find something that you enjoy because if it feels like torture, you're not going to do it. And you're definitely not going to stick with it. You know, and I tell the people in my groups, you know, I do a whole video on how to pick a gym and how to pick a trainer. And you don't have to spend $100 a month. You can go to Planet Fitness for $9.99 if you just need a treadmill. You know, go outside, take it outside, buy a bike, ride a bike. You just have to find something that's going to give you peace of mind that you're going to enjoy. And don't think of it as a torture. Think of it. I use it. I work through what am I going to talk about in my rooms this week? What what are my themes going to be? What, what blog am I going to write? What video am I going to film? Or I think about what's my to-do list for the day. It's how I start my morning with my dog on the trail. It works. But it could change. Next month, I'll be on some other thing. But you got to find something that you really enjoy. And don't set crazy, I'm going to work out six days a week. If you have never done it before, you're not going to do that. Just say this mm -hmm. week, I want to go do it twice. That's my goal this week. I'm going to go for a walk every morning for 10 minutes. I'm going to take two classes this week. Yeah. Start yeah. small, meet friends, find like-minded people, and just try new things. Maybe it's kayaking. Maybe it's, I mean, who knows what it's mm -hmm. going to be. And if I always tell people, if you've ever thought maybe you would like it, try it. You might hate it. I, I have downhill skiing on my bucket list. It's something I want to do. I will probably break my legs, but I want to try it once, you know? But you just got to try it one time. Give your permission. Give yourself permission to make a fool of yourself. Give yourself permission to fail at it. And just go try it once because you never know. If anybody would have told me I was going to become obsessed with the hip hop, step aerobics, I mean, Hello, 1980. What? Does it get any more old school? <laughs> Guy is a phenomenon. He's traveling across the country and has built this whole cult following. And it's the most fun I've ever had. So just be open to something new. But you have to find a soulmate workout, something that you enjoy. Okay. Hope, that's great. I hope I can give some hope to some people, too, that, that are the ones that say, oh, I, you know, I don't want to exercise. I can't sweat. I can't run. Well, first of all, I wanted to run too. And, you know, I heard about the runner's high and I was going, oh, I can't wait to lose weight so I can go run. I still don't like to run. I'm like, Laura, I'm running. Call the police if I'm running. But the thing that I did find was yoga. I don't like to sweat. I also don't do well at going to classes because I would love to go to step aerobics and dance because, you, Laura, you know how much I love to dance and so do you, Connie. But I have a hard time getting to classes. But yoga, everybody keeps telling me there's no way I can do it. You know, no, you're wrong because there are moderated poses. The thing that yoga does for you, when you get older, there's two things you lose. Balance is one thing and flexibility. And so when you see older people that are on the walkers and like if they had had been flexible and I mean if you bend over and touch your toes every day you'll be able to do it till you're 90 unless there's some joint problems but you can find beginning yoga on YouTube for free and then if you're the type that goes it's better in a class go to a beginner's class I also suggest 
not to do Bikram yoga unless you're just really hardcore because it, that's the stuff where they put you in the really hot, hot room. And I'm worried somebody's going to have a heart attack and die. So what is that called, Yvonne? Bikram, Bikram is just hot yoga. And it's oh, sort of... It. This was sort of um, developed because they wanted the youngsters to come back to yoga and they didn't think it was probably stressful enough. Well, that's stressful. But, you know, I do yoga and people ask me all the time, do you work out? I just do yoga. And, and yeah. like I say, I can do a 10 or 15 minute deal in the morning. I could do that once a day and I'd still be in the same place I'm in right now. It is so incredible. Your body is your resistance. That's your weight. Yes. And so you get to do it all. And you can, you can, you know, if you want to sweat, you can sweat. I don't like to sweat. I do yoga in the air conditioning. <laughs> and I like to walk. And I like, I also like to rollerblade. And um, I like to ride bicycles. But the thing is, is that unless, you, and oh, dancing. That's, I mean, if you want to turn on, if you love to dance, I mean, most women I've known at the event love to dance. And they'll they'll spend all night out there, and they and I ask them, do you ever dance? No. I said, don't you love it? I loved it. I said, well, then dance by yourself. You know, turn on the music and dance, and learn line dances. They're on YouTube too. Um, it's it's just you know you you gotta find something that you love, and you gotta find something that you don't look at as working. You know, and so. It's like I say, I think I would probably love a spin class other than you have to sweat a lot, but <laughs> but I like it. Um, I, love to, I love skiing. I like water skiing and snow skiing. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and I couldn't do any of those things for a long time not until I was able to get the weight off. And I just, just, you know, I wish there was a way I could link a video, but it's a guy that was a paratrooper and he had done a lot of jumps and he ended up having no knees and he was on walking cane things and he had gained a lot of weight he, what's that guy's name dan uh, I, diamond I, I, something like that. yeah but, but he he accepted this guy he immediately lost 60 pounds um he started doing yoga he fell over a lot it shows that and at the end of the video i cry every time he he's running through the park and he was he oh couldn't gosh. even walk and when people wow. tell me i can't do yoga look at that video you can do yoga because this guy you know he did it and it's, it's just incredible it's let me great. tell you there's a there's a woman and and i is abby lentz do you guys know abby yeah she, okay yeah. i'm gonna write this is it l-e-n-t-z i think it is abby, yoga. yeah she has um uh What's it called? Heavy yoga for heavyweights. Well, it's heavyweight yoga, and you can also find her under heartfelt yoga, I believe. But heavyweight yes. yoga, do it. Abby's awesome. She is. She's amazing, and she has battled weight for forever, and she's gone up and down a little bit with her, a lot with her weight. But you know, I attended one of her classes at one of the events. She lives in Texas, and she does chair aerobics. Yes. So if you're if you're just in the process of getting that weight off, you can start really easy with chair yoga. And it's it's calming, it's relaxing. You know, I started yoga about a year and a half ago. I'm in love with it. And yeah. I do not do hardcore yoga. I'm like Yvonne, I'm not real, real thrilled with, I'm not a runner, hate it. I'm not doing it, you know? Um, <laughs> But I have, I have some basic things. I've exercised most of my life um, for the last, well, when my kids were little, this is hysterical. I would do Kathy Smith. Any of you old enough to know who Kathy Smith is? Well, I had a video and my kids still do this. And they were like three and they put on their little leotards and we do Kathy Smith together. So they learned at an early age that exercise is just a part of life. And for the last 20 years, I've done my treadmill. I love my treadmill. I do it, you know, several times a week. But I also balanced out with a uh, weight, you know, some arm weights, some um, uh, calisthenic type stuff where my body is, is the weight, you know, lunges and squats and that sort of thing. I went through a really long phase where I did Zumba, which I absolutely love. 
but it kind of hurt my knees. So I don't do it as often. And then I hurt my back, you know, yeah. so I don't do it as often, but I love it. But I totally love yoga. Um, yeah. And I try different things. There's a girl online. It's all free. It's yoga with Adrian, And I love it. She's got hardcore. She's got easy. I don't like the hot yoga. I love the yin yoga where you hold poses longer. Um, it's very relaxing for me. And I recently started doing the, the, the Pio, the Pilates yoga together. That's some hardcore stuff, friends. That's crazy. But again, you can modify it. I love all the yoga stuff because you can modify it. So if you're a beginner, you do the beginner stuff. And, and as, as you, long as I've been telling you about yoga, I can't believe you waited that long to try I it. I know, Yvonne, and I love it. And, you know, so, you are actually very much an inspiration for that because you're, you're toned, your arms are strong. I can't do a lot of the upper body stuff, but I do a little bit. I do as much as I can, and I know I'll get better. And so you know, I agree. Find something you like. If you have the opportunity to find a workout buddy, then have a workout buddy because that is a great thing. Have an accountability person. If you like going to the gym and being social with it, do it. If you like classes, do them. I like working out at home by myself because it's my time. It's me time. Don't bother me, world. So find what you like. You know, Steve and I are in, in Lake Tahoe. The first two days we were here, we have this trail that we love. And what's it called, Steve? Rubicon Trail. Yeah, so if you're yeah. ever out here, Rubicon Trail is beautiful. It's along um, the lake, and it's amazing. And in the first two days, we've probably walked 15 miles. It did not feel like exercise. So incredibly beautiful. Today, we, we downhill ski. Tomorrow, we're going to downhill ski. I don't need my treadmill, right? No. No. So just do different things. Try different things. But you're responsible for doing what it takes, putting forth the effort to take what you say that you want. A couple other pieces I just want to add is when it comes to things like yoga, if people are on Instagram, there's a girl I want to say her name is Nola, N-O-L-A, Trees. And she is a plus size girl that is ridiculously amazing at yoga. And if you go all the way back through her Instagram feed, you watch her journey and she kind of went on this whole minimalism thing where she kind of sold everything and took off across the country, touring the country, teaching yoga at crazy places. But her body, like I looked at her body and I'm like, that was my body pre-surgery. Like, and she doesn't care. And you watched her whole transition where she's in sports bras and the things she do does, my little size two girlfriend couldn't do if she tried. Her right. power and her strength from just conditioning herself. I think it's really important that when you set out on a fitness journey at whatever weight, that you find somebody that looks like you. You find a program that looks like you that you can compare to or do your homework. Like with yoga, when I worked at Equinox, Find a restorative yoga class somewhere where it's about stretching and it's about core because so many people would walk into Equinox or Lifetime Fitness and they go, oh, yoga, I'm signing up. And they would come to class for half a class, walk out, never come again because it's so far above their level and people aren't confident enough to be in the back and not care because they're nervous and people are staring at me and they quit before they even understand what I do for their body. So if you're in a gym, talk to a membership advisor, let talk to a trainer, you know, trainers will talk to you for free, get into a class of a level that fits your capabilities and your starting point. But find somebody even if it's not in your gym on Instagram or on Facebook or someone that kind of looks like you and buddy up or follow them and learn from them. There's a couple other people and I'm going to probably screw up her name. But there's a lot of plus size fitness studios across the country. And I'm actually getting ready to do a couple road trips. There's a gal. You guys probably know her. I think her name's Gabrielle Williams. I think so. Yeah. She, if you go on Facebook, it's called Cosmic Studio. She had a gastric bypass. And I want to say she was 500 pounds maybe. And now she's two something. But she owns her own fitness studio. And it's for plus sizes only. And she found a space, painted it neon pink. And I think it's called Cosmic Fitness or it's C-O-S-M-I-C. 
but I'm literally going to do a road trip and go down and look at her studio and go take classes and pick her brain for my studio so I can learn from her. But find somebody that looks like you or that has walked the path. Because I always tell people when you're going to hire a trainer, I don't want a trainer whose weight loss success was 10 pounds. You know, I want somebody that knows my body and understands my aches, my pains, why I don't want to do a squat in the middle of a gym floor with a million guys around me. Hello. You know, find somebody that's going to be your buddy and listen to you and help you with your comfort levels. Yeah. Cosmic yoga studio or something like that. But there are a ton of places and a ton of people, Pandora, who is on your podcast. She's a big runner. Now find people in the community that either are a pro at what you're interested in or just starting and find somebody that looks like you because it will help you acclimate and reaffirm that I can do this too. Another tip I want to give people is if you have a smartphone, go in and download podcasts to your phone because treadmills can be the death of you. You know, walking outside, I literally listen to pod, you can't see this, podcasts every single day. And I listen to business development. I listen to spiritual Joel Olstein. I listen to books on tape. But some, sometimes you don't need somebody. Like Connie said, hit a trail, grab your dog, put a podcast in your ears. An hour goes by before you even know what just happened. I love what you just said about, you know, watching a TED Talk while, or listening to a TED Talk while you work out or going for a walk and listening to a Joel Olstein or an Andy Stanley or yep. going for a walk and you know it's you know that is so important you listen mm-hmm. to all kinds of different stuff and you learn and you grow i'll tell you who's got an amazing podcast for the weight loss uh community is rigor cortel it's a weight sure. loss surgery podcast she's brilliant she's had a tremendous array of guests on that show i have learned so much listening to that show when I work in this field day in and day out. Um, anybody on here, if you go to my Instagram, follow me on Instagram, every morning I listen to a podcast and I take a picture of Lola and the podcast and I post it and I share because you can learn anything. Listen to food, nutrition. I mean, there are so many nutrition gurus that you can learn from, you know, and it doesn't always I mean, for me, and as far out as we are, yes, I want to learn and research, but I want to know other things besides just our industry, you know? So it's like the nutrition, the fitness, the motivational, it's just the the list is endless. I mean, there's more podcasts than you have time to even begin to listen to. So if anybody's looking for some good ones, if you go to my Instagram, which is just Laura Lee Preston, I shoot a picture of what I listen to every day and I'll introduce you to them. You'll find some new, I have a lady that, is Paris obsessed and does all these adventures in Paris and all these authors. Like you can put yourself in la la land on any topic you want. Right. And this Uh, is all about positive thinking too. Go go ahead. I'm going to go to that. Yeah. Cause I've got some really good stuff on that. Go for it. Okay. Um, I posted on my very after girl Facebook page, a a video that is just incredible about perception or, or in it. And it starts off where you see a guy in a, in a vet. He's at a light and he sees a helicopter above him. And he says, oh, I'd really like to have a helicopter. And then there's a guy next to him that's in a, a crappier car. And he's saying, oh, I'd really love to have the Corvette. And next to the guy in the crappy car is a guy in a bicycle. And he's saying, wow, I really wish I could have a car. And then next to that is the guy at a bus stop who says, wow, I really wish I had a bicycle. And then the last part is a child that's on the balcony that's in a wheelchair. And he says, wow, I wish I could walk. Wow. And I mean, if we don't understand how important it is to be grateful for what we have, especially for those of us who have lost this weight and we have things that we never dreamed we would have had, and yet we're still busy looking at people that have things that we don't have instead of instead of listening to the people that are coming up behind us that would give anything for a moment of our time. And, and it's just the perception of it all, you know, I mean, this thinking, thinking, it, it's always going to be there for me. And, and, and it almost sometimes gets worse now because I think that, oh, I can pass as a normal person, you know, because I've lost this weight and people don't really know how unworthy I am. So I can kind of fake it, you know, and, and so the only way I can get out of that is to help others and remind myself what I'm grateful for. And, and, and then the other thing 
is that I really, really believe in this, is that our brains are like sponges. Our subconscious, is, like for instance, I run into a door and I say, oh God, Yvonne, that was stupid. But that goes straight into your subconscious. Yes. So I don't say that anymore. And if I slip, I will say what I call a turnaround statement where I say, okay, Yvonne, you weren't stupid. You just ran into the door. It's a mistake. Because I think it's really important what you pump into your head. And if you're constantly telling yourself, you know, you do the stinking vegan or you're not grateful for what you have, it can be all gone in a moment's notice. And that's for the people that are around you and love you and you love too. They can be gone. So I'm a big proponent of when I leave people that I love, act like it's the last time that you're going to see them because it might be. And life is too short for the crap. That, that we pile up in our in our brains. And so I just think it's just perception is everything. Um, because I tell people all the time, like, well, this, this, and this happened. And I go like, well, I'll tell you what, uh, you could be, that could have all happened when you were at 300 pounds. Would you rather it happen now? Or would you rather it happen when you were like that? Oh, okay, that's better. You know, and so the thing is, it's just, it's so important, so, so important to be grateful and, and look for the good and, and get out. And, and that's why I say the support groups, stay away from support groups where the crap and the drama happen. Because I've seen this a million times. And I know Laura has too. We've lived this on the phone many nights. And, and the thing is, is that they're so shocked when they're, they take part of the yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden it turns on them. And they go, oh, but. You know, I was there from the beginning and I was in and, and you ran on the crap and guess what? It got turned on them and they're like upset and like, why would you stay there? Why would you do that to yourself? I mean, that's just like putting, I mean, you're, you're doing the worst thing you can do for your journey possible. I like that you, like you said, stay away from, stay away from drama. drama. And I also, and I also like you like said, you said, how you get out of the sticking thinking when it sets in because it will we are humans you know we have had probably years of you know repeating to ourselves some negative things but the awareness as soon as you become aware you change it it doesn't yep. have to be i'm the best thing that ever happened but something neutral that wasn't stupid i made a mistake i love that so you have to become aware and then put the effort into making the change and people are like but i've tried that i've tried that well guess what you have to try it ten thousand million zillion trillion times because you are literally building new neural pathways in your brain and it takes a long time for this to become second nature in my group we talk about habits and routines and i i mean i used to post a to-do list every day and it was get up make my bed take my vitamins drink my shake because when it, you do it and you don't think about it, it becomes a habit and it becomes a routine. In my group, we always talk about, you know, the biggest job you're ever going to have in your life is that you're a CEO. You are a CEO of your life. You can fire and hire anybody you want. If you're in a drama support group where there's chaos all the time, you can quit. Nobody's making you go to it. Pull out, leave. You know, one of the big exercises we talk about is who's your circle? Who is the five people in your circle that either are at your level or hopefully above your level that you're striving to get to that is going to inspire you and push you and motivate you? Because we only, you know, you got to change to have change. And we can only tolerate what we tolerate. So I always tell everybody in the group, you know, one of the biggest things we do is we weigh in every Monday morning because the scale to us, it doesn't define us. It doesn't tell me if I'm a good person. It doesn't tell me today's going to be a good day or a bad day because I'm up or I'm down. It's always a good day on Monday because I showed up. I showed up and I put that scale up in the room and it can be the worst news ever. But if you saw that, when they put that scale shot up there and then you have 15 people like it and go, it's going to be a great week. Nobody ever says, oh, what did you eat? Oh, my tribe are rock stars. And it's like if we had gold stars, we'd smack each other on the head because you showed up, you put up, and you're, it, doesn't, it doesn't define you. You're on your way to vacation. Have an amazing week. It was a bad week last week. Moving on, it's a fresh, clean day. But the fact that you showed up and you stood on a scale and you posted it in a support group room, you're not in fear of it. 
when you take the fear away from that number and redefine your life by what you're doing, how you're living, where you're going, the people you're surrounding yourself, instead of I'm up two pounds, I'm down five pounds, I'm up, that dictates you way too much. And so we just strive all the time that you can fire and hire anybody and everybody in your life. Yep. Yes, that's true. That's true. And that's true. Good, and, and that's another thing I'll hear is like um, when they're in those really drama school support groups and they'll say like, but I have so many friends. And I go, they're not your friends. Mm -hmm. And and you get used to that that drama and they thrive on it. And and the deal is, is that I've seen some of those break off. And guess what? Those same people that you really did like, they kept with you. Or they got out finally. It's like getting out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is that is some of the stuff that just nearly destroyed me because I'm so super sensitive and, and I care so much for everybody. And, and I, I really don't have a bad thing to say about just about everybody. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the people in my life. And the thing is, is that, you know, you, you've just got to get away from that trash. It's, it's just trash. It's garbage in. It and, is. And, and, and like I say, our journeys are difficult enough. We're, we're overcoming years of, of abusing our bodies and our, and our minds. And, and we know with addiction, I mean, go ahead, stress yourself out. Then you're going to trigger. So, mm -hmm. and I wanted to say also, Laura, talking about the scales, I also believe, and I, I weigh every day. And it's not a big deal. The scale is not a monster. And it, to me, not weighing is kind of like driving a car without a, a, um, a speedometer so that, or a gas gauge. So I don't, you don't know. And so give me the information because you can't fix what you don't acknowledge. If you acknowledge it, don't beat yourself up. Tomorrow's another day. Besides, you can't change it. Damn thing that happened the day before. So why would you do any different than to just dust yourself off and go on with it? And Laura, I love that you're having them you know, show the scale shot. That's awesome. I think. That's you know, awesome. I think that that I think that the scale thing, again, it's different for everybody, and I think it depends where you are in your journey, right? If you're at yeah. a place where the scale determines your worth, which it should never, but it does for a lot of people, right? You know, then maybe once a week, or you know, it depends. But when you get to the place where you guys are where it's a piece of information for you that helps you make decisions about your behavior, that's a whole different thing. And so maybe you need to have a mentor like one of you guys to help go, okay, I weighed myself, it's freaking me out. <laughs> and when emotions get really big, we need logic to kind of level yeah. them off. And you can use yeah. the voice of reason from somebody else to say, wait a minute, that doesn't tell me anything about who you are as a human being. That tells me where you're at in your journey with weight. Nothing about your value or your worth. And none of those people in your group are going to love you based on what that scale says that day. The thing that I always point out, too, is like when somebody will gain back 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 pounds, and they go like, okay, you feel worse than you did when you were at your highest weight. And what you don't realize is when you were that weight on the way down, you were ecstatic the first time you hit that number. So that tells you in your head, okay, are you going to be happy? You'll be sad. Sure, you were down below that. You can do it again. I, I, I share Laura's story all the time and another friend of mine uh, named Nina that lost 70 pounds and tell him it can be done. But the very important thing is, if you don't do something about it, you're going to look up in another six months and it's going to be worse. So, you know, you got to do something and you got to seek out the people that know what they're doing and care about you and, and can share these things. And I do believe once a week is also just as good. It's just that I can do a lot of damage in a week. I, I don't anymore, but before I could. In two days, I could, I felt like I could put on 10 pounds, if I, you know, and I, it just horrifies me. I don't want to have to take it back off. So, right. I, and even I think sometimes because I project what I'm going to see that it happens mm -hmm. because I believe you see it, you, you know, you, you are it, you believe it, you see it, you are. And so 
when I when I started, I, I and I also don't believe in weighing very much the first year because you're going to go up and down. You're going to lose the weight no matter what. But when I started weighing um, every day, all of a sudden my weight didn't fluctuate hardly at all because I had sort of a daily information thing. And whether it's daily, weekly, just you know, first find out the scale is your friend. It's just information. It's not a monster. Right. And and get the information and then do something about it. Yeah. And don't go eat. <laughs> and I agree with you. You know, what you said and the psychological thing is we move in the direction of our most dominant thought. So if you're thinking, you know, weight gain, weight gain, weight gain, then you gain weight. It's kind of like when we were skiing today, this guy who works there was telling us, don't look where you don't want to go. <laughs> the exact same principle, right? Don't look at the edge of that cliff <laughs> if you don't want to go there. So don't look at, it, it's that garbage in, garbage out thing. Put good, positive stuff through those podcasts and stuff online. And people like you guys, there are a lot of people in the community do great work. The WSFA conference is coming up. There's going to be a lot of people there who can help you with the positive thinking and the nutrition and the exercise. Great events. The OAC, uh, Obesity Help. What am I missing? Uh, uh, that's big three. Right? <laughs> Those are, those are great places to get information, to educate yourself, to find some people to stick with the winners. Go ahead, yes, Yvonne. And Laura and I both will answer anybody. I mean, if they contact us, yes. we're, we're there. And, and that's just that we've both been that way for a long time because we want to share. And, and, uh, and by the way, Laura was the exact opposite of me. She had all the research and the books and the studies. And I heard Carney Wilson on Good Morning America, and I made a call in 15 minutes. That was my research. Wow. So I decided, I'm doing this. And I didn't care if I died on the table, because I just said, no, either fix me or take me out, because I can't live like this another day. Don't want to. I was in pain emotionally and physically. There and are many. I, Go ahead. I had back surgery in, in 94, and yet I can do yoga, and that's why my back is so much better, is because I do yoga. And like I said, the same thing about the flexibility and the balance, two things you can get back, and you don't have to age in that way. Because if you don't use it, you won't lose it. That's do you think? Sure. Do you think yoga will help me get my memory back? Yes. <laughs> hey, okay, we're running out of time, and I want Laura to be able to tell about her program. But for me, yeah. the whole thing, the whole weight loss journey, the whole recovery from any addiction journey, the whole growing up as an adult boils down to healing the relationship with yourself, right? Being overweight, being suffering from the disease of obesity results in a lot of, you know, damage emotionally that comes from externally, but also from internally. And I think that the key to healing in relationships or from addiction or from diseases like obesity is healing our relationship with ourselves, because we become our own worst enemies. And Laura and I both do online programs. They have a very different focus. And so it depends on where you are in your journey. And I'm going to have her talk about hers. Mine is called um, Gain While You Lose. You gain insight, you gain awareness and you gain ways to heal that relationship with yourself. And I go into the, you know, psychological stuff, underlying issues related to how we view ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we allow other people to treat us. And that's available online. And you can get information on my website or on my Facebook page. It's also available in person if you live in the Augusta area. So that is available. We're going to be starting again in about two weeks. Laura, tell us about your program because it's amazing. And don't anybody say you don't have money to spend on these programs because the weight loss industry is a bazillion billion dollar industry. And you've spent a lot of money on things in the past that did not help. And these programs will help you, Thank you. in many ways, not just in your weight. Laura, tell us about your program. I run two different programs. The one that people would start with is called Regain Control. 
and it is four weeks and it's 28 days. It's a private secure lockdown Facebook room. And basically what it is, is it's a 24 hour a day open place to vent. We do Monday weigh-ins. Every day there's a video, there's a lesson. And we, we really focus on what I call the seven fundamental keys. We do nutrition. I laughed when I saw your description because we do nutrition, fitness, we talk about career and finance, so we talk about money, we talk about relationships, self-development, taking classes, learning, self-care, and we talk about spirit. And so every day there's a video that posts up. Some days the videos are 10 minutes. There's actually a couple that are 30. We talk about food addiction, but there's a video that posts up in the room, and then there's homework. Sometimes it's just questions to answer, but sometimes it's physically doing something like cleaning out a closet or scrubbing out your refrigerator. So there are lessons in all those categories for 28 days. It runs $50. So I always tell people I equate it to, you would spend $50 at Weight Watchers where you would get four meetings for 30 minutes in a month. You get this room for 28 days. It's open 24 hours. People are in there posting, doing videos. We make vision boards. It is the most, I tell you, Connie, the biggest gift is those people to me because I have watched people get their dream jobs. They've, they've moved across the country in that room. I've had an actor get these crazy gigs. Like this room bonds and at the end of that 28 days, either they can leave and be educated on all these topics or they go into the second program, which is maintain control, which is a group of the most amazing people that show up for each other every day. And if I, to me, it's a jewel, it's a gem. It's a jewel box of people. It's beyond affordable. You're going to spend more money at Weight Watchers and you're going to get people that actually had weight loss surgery and actually have walked the path. So it's been the most powerful thing. Um, we're running a new class. We have special guests. I mean, one of the things I talk about in my room is that you can have a community and a support group but I still wholeheartedly endorse therapy. Connie actually does a guest video for us because you have to get to your whys and you have to do your homework and you have to go back and look at all the reasons why you got to where you were at. So we absolutely endorse therapy. So we have guest videos from successful long-term post-ops. So it's just, it's a real blessing in my life, but the community, we're on our seventh session. It's starting this weekend. So there's still, still time to register. But I have people from the very first group in September that are still in maintained control. It's awesome. amazing. It is a great program. It's a wonderful program. And I really encourage people, please do these, do these things for yourself. Do these things for yourself. And of course, Yvonne is always available. And you two have been pillars in this community. And I'm so grateful to have met you toward the beginnings of your journey. Yvonne, you were a little on the scene before I came, but Laura and I came on about the same time. And yeah. it's been, you know, we get so much in return from doing the work that we do. There's just no two ways yeah. about that. So I just you. wanted to add, add something real quickly. Um, yes, on my 15 year search anniversary, I did a post and it's a letter from bariatric girl 2016 to bariatric girl 2001. And it's the things that I wanted to say to her, the things that I've learned. And it, it's uh, on my blog. It's it's uh, posted on the top of my Facebook page. And if somebody gets a chance, I think it'd be a, it's a good idea to read it. I think it's, it's a, a good post. Can you type so, in your um? Can you type in where to find that? And Laura, type, type in your information too. Yep. And the three of us are going to be together again in Yay! May on the twenty twenty fifth with Tenny McCarty, and there will also be Connie Cast in between now and then. And we encourage you to join us, give us your feedback, uh, share this information with your friend. This will be available on YouTube. So let people know, let them come and find this information that you guys have shared. I treasure you too. Thank you for being such an active part of the community. Honey, one yes. last thing I wanna say is on Facebook, I have a book club that I do. If you look up Laura Book Club, you'll find it and it's free. You can just put a request in and join, but I'm doing Tinny's book for the month of May. So if anybody's going to okay. jump on the Connie, um, Connie cast for May, if you want to do the book club, I'm starting at the beginning of May. So we will have read her book before we go on the Connie cast. So if anybody out there wants to join it, jump onto Facebook, it's Laura book club. 
um, and just join it. And every week we read chapters and I do a video discussing the chapters. So that way, anybody that wants to do it will be up to par when we talk with her. Awesome. And also, Laura and Yvonne are going to be the voice of the weight loss surgery community. So if you have questions to ask Tenny, please contact either one of them. <laughs> Was that a real cat? No. <laughs> the reason, okay, the reason this is cracking me up so much is, you know, when I'm on the treadmill, I watch The Young and the Restless. That's my guilty pleasure. And there's uh -huh. a, a, a crazy person on the show, and she has a fake cat. <laughs> so I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, diversion. But send your questions for Tenny and uh, to Laura or Yvonne, and we will be sure that they get asked so that you can find out what <laughs> Great, great. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, thank you for being here for Connie Cash. Share it with other people, and we will see you guys very soon. We appreciate your time. Bye, ladies. Thank you so much.